breaking news out of Major League Baseball where the league has postponed opening day until at least April 14th. The news comes after the Players Union rejected the league's updated proposal to end the lockout. The latest fork in the road between the two sides is the international draft. The league offered three different proposals in regards to an international draft, all of which were rejected by the Players Union. The first four series of the season have now officially been canceled. That is unless they make another adjustment and say opening day is still a possibility. But for now, at least the first four series have been canceled. And here's a statement from Rob Manfred, the MLB commissioner, saying, quote, because of the logistical realities of the calendar, another two series are being removed from the schedule, meaning that opening day is postponed until April 14th. We work hard to reach an agreement, offered a fair deal with significant improvements for the players and our fans. I am saddened by this situation's continued impact on our game and all those who are part of it, especially our loyal fans. Let's get some insight. Welcome in former Marlins president David Sampson helped lead the club to a World Series in 2003. David, uh, your reaction here on the failed negotiations as they continue to dra dra drag on here. I think the negotiations are ongoing. So on nothing personal and on the queue, I've told you that there were going to be missed games. I told you that it could be May 1st, could be June 1st, because the players are really dug in here. They want to get a huge victory over the owners to make up for the losses they had in the previous collective bargain agreements. And the owners only want to give them a small victory. And the offers made today by the owners don't make a mistake here. They are a victory for the players, but not big enough. How far away are we here? You know, it depends what, what kind of glasses you have. So I got the readers, so I can tell you, ooh, you're right here. Objects are way closer than they appear. The question is, do both sides actually want to deal right now? Are both sides hanging off the edge of the cliff by their fingertips saying, if we don't do it now, we're going to lose a season? They're not there yet, because if this season starts two weeks late, that means by the All-Star Game, by October, you and I will be talking baseball, and we won't even remember this segment. Okay, so you've always said that the ongoing negotiations are a part of all of this, but what's the impact of this for the game, for the health of the game, for the fans? I think it's slightly overblown, and here's why. I understand as a fan, which I am, that it hurts. I want to be in spring training. I want to be doing highlights with you. I want to be looking at future World Series odds. But I also know that I'm quick to forget, so I'm willing to forgive. However, in the negotiating room, the owners are not focused on fans. The players are not focused on fans. They are focused on getting the best deal they can for themselves. And that's what happens in every negotiation. But when we are front facing and making statements, we have to say it's all about the fans. We're thinking about you. We're doing it for you. That's just talk. The fact is they're trying to do a deal that's best for the players or best for the owners, depending on which side you're on. All right. So how about this? Because I, I, I've kind of wanted to ask you this for a couple days now, and, and maybe this is a conspiracy theory, and I know you don't like those at all, really. But when you think about it, right, April, worst month of, on the baseball schedule, least attended, least revenue, the weather's bad in all 30 markets, except if you're on the West Coast and in Florida and you're in a dome or whatever it is. What, let's just push the season back, overhaul the entire – like these incremental – uh, arguments about a million here or two or three, and then I get it over the long haul, but maybe just the best position here is just to start May 1st, 140 games, and let's just get it done with. Like, that's the side All of the right. owners are trying to push it back as long as possible. I think that you'd be a great mediator. I think what you're saying is just give up one month of games now for a good agreement that lasts five seasons. Is that a trade the owners would make? Yeah. Is that a trade the players would make? Give up, you know, 20 games worth of money to get a huge number of concessions for the next five years? Would they give that up? That remains to be seen because their horizon is so much shorter than that of the owners. But as a team president for 18 years, April games matter just as much as September games because our TV deal is spread out over 162 games. The national revenue we get is spread out. So I want games played at all times.
but you don't think at this time when people are more and more, there's more and more entertainment options that they're not just saying, all right, I'm done with baseball. I've had enough. Like the hardcore fans like you and me, we're coming back no matter when they start. There's no question. But then the, the, the fans that are like, hey, what, they got to get a deal done here. I'd like to go to opening day or whatever it might be. It, it, isn't that a, a situation where the bo- both sides say, look, the health of our game, not just in the interim, the two, three years, we're talking 10 years down the road. Isn't that sort of a factor that's considered? So what we would do in the room at owners meetings is we would talk about the NFL, we talk about the NHL, we talk about the NBA, all three of whom had work stoppages since the last MLB work stoppage. Now the NFL is obviously a behemoth, so they got through their work stoppage no problem. The NHL lost a season, but they've recovered. Asset values are, are actually higher in hockey than they've been, and fans are going to games and can't even remember the fact that a season was lost. The NBA, when there was a shortened season, do you remember that? Yes. Time missed for a work stoppage. It's it poof. It's a fagazi. People actually forget about it. I know it's good to talk about now on the queue, and it's really good on Twitter and for all the pundits who say baseball's dying, but those are the same people who say the NFL is dying because of all the domestic violence and all the other things, and meanwhile, everybody's watching the Super Bowl, betting on the Super Bowl, and going to games. You are not going to lose fans, and the on-field changes that we're trying to do in baseball, that they are trying to do, that's actually to get younger, to get more people engaged in the actual game. So that matters way more than missing just two weeks. All right, your prediction is still May 1st when we have opening day, or is it has it adjusted? So, I, you know, I've been, I'm going to die on the vine, right? Because I've been saying that, that it's going to be May before there's games, and I've been saying that for years, right? I knew this was coming because in 2016, the players were so angry about the agreement the minute it was signed. Of course, they voted for it. And what worries me is that we're seeing a lot of Scott Boris's players talking, Max Scherzer, right? Garrett Cole. I want to hear from the majority of the union, like the other 97% of the players who are not going to get paid where the minimum has been increased, where the pre-arbitration money has been increased. I want to hear from those players whether or not they've got the intestinal fortitude to hold out and to not play for a long period of time. The owners would like to start before Jackie Robinson Day. I'd like to believe opening day will be April 14th, but after today, everybody needs some sleep. We need to breathe, cool off, and start over again in a couple of days. All right, well, for now, the first four series of the season has been canceled as we await these negotiations to finally come to a head, get a deal done. But right now, we wait, we monitor, and uh, we watch David Sampson here on CBS Sports HQ. David, thanks. And if you want to watch David Sampson more or listen to him, check out Nothing Personal with David Sampson. You can watch on YouTube, listen to any of your favorite podcast uh, hosting, uh, whatever they're called. What are they called? Not hosting sites? No, what are they? I don't know what they're called. Whatever. Spotify, uh, Apple. I'm on Apple, so I just go to Apple. Uh, Nothing personal with David Sampson. Download and subscribe today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.